Welcome back to the podcast. Yo. I'm your host, Mr. Madeover. I think I'm the co-host. She is Mrs. Madeover. I'm going to do her intro for her, too. What? Yes. Thank the Lord for uh, help. He's been so good. Um, Today, man. I, I wanna, am Mrs. Madeover. She is Mrs. Madeover. And today, today. um, um. I'm dealing with some issues, honestly. Uh, I'm trying to do the whole bulking thing. Oh, I find myself in like aisles that I'm not supposed to be in. But what is bulking, honey? Because they might not even know what that means. <sighs> you sound like a country right there. But uh, bulking... Because <laughs> I am I'm from the country, man. It's basically putting on more muscle mass. Well, sometimes, it, which means you're taking in a higher calorie deficit. I sound like a trainer right there. Deficit? That means... That ain't the right word. I'm sure it's a deficit. Calorie deficit. Bigsby. What's what's the meaning of de- uh, deficit? We're not sponsored by Bigsby. I didn't understand that. Let's see. But I'm taking in more calories, so I'm trying to count my macros. You are talking all this stuff. These people are gonna be like, "What?" Listen, macros is how many calories no, you take. No deficit. In. Deficit means it's too small. Calorie. Yeah, counting my calorie deficit. According to Fat Count, a calorie deficit is created when you intake less food energy than your body requires. Told you. In that state, your body draws in your fat stores to burn the extra energy it needs, resulting in weight loss. Thank you. So I've been cal- <laughs> tracking my calories, man, and uh, I'm just like, in it, it's funny because I'm not really a, um, I'm not really a big eater, but I can be a big eater. Hey, you eat all the time. Uh, I will die if I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> you will not. Die. You can go days before. starvation. You know, you be. You can go days without food. It's the water that you need. Calorie deficit. <laughs> like that was in Walmart today. So I'm like, okay, bet. My wife said, get some plates. Bet, get some plates. Plus, I needed something to hang up, you know, my light stuff in, in the uh, studio. So I'm like, eh, as I'm, ch- and, you know, they always get you in the check. Watch that checkout aisle. Please, watch the checkout aisle. You want some big Walmart? Yeah, why don't I go to the little one? Because um, I know the little one don't have stuff to. Hang up stuff. They just got, you know, miniature stuff. But um, I'm just looking at all kinds of pies. Y'all, y'all, y'all keep me in prayer. Fat guy in little <laughs> That's basically sugar. what it is. But uh all kinds of pies and like <laughs> like <laughs> the calorie, but I mean but the calorie on it though. Okay, it was four hundred and something calories. Four hundred and ninety so to be exact. That's good cal. I mean, that's bad calories. I'm not gonna lie. That's, that's so bad horrible. calories, yeah. And y'all, he's sitting over there. He, this is how he laid back. This is kind of good. That's what's up. But I'm still on this balking stage. Um, I still have been working out every day. Matter of fact, I still gotta work out before we for this night in. But we'll see. I'm, I'm still getting it. At the end, of the day, I'm still on track. Um, the body's doing tremendous. Um, I'm feeling good, you know. Um, what? Baby. But who are you? <laughs> That's a good question. So who am I? That's what we're talking about. You're talking about like weight loss stuff. But who are you? Well. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about who am I? Not who are you, or who am I? It's more of like a self check. Because honestly, um, we have to get to the stage where we, I mean, where we ask ourselves, like, who am I? Like, what is your identity? That's a question. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) I thought he was talking to y'all. Um, so who am I? What is my identity? Yeah. That's easy. I am 
a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a teacher, I'm a friend, I'm a daughter, I'm a granddaughter. That's what you mean? No, I'm talking about like, what's your identity? Oh, like me. As a person, as an individual. If if I remove, come on now, I feel it. My head, if, I mean, no, sir, don't. If, if I remove... You as a mother, you as a daughter, you as a sister, you as everything around you from your career. I mean, if I stripped you, if I stripped you down bare, who would you be? That's the question. You, you, you trying to peel back layers today, huh? That's the only, that's the only way we get to the root, baby. So she only way we get to the root. Shifting my chair a little bit. Mm. So if you peel back all layers. Who am I? Where do I derive from, basically? What defines you? Like or would you like me to just take the lead on this dance? <laughs> dance, dance. No. <laughs> Um, if I go back, back, good place to start back. So starting out, um, who am I? Who, if you were to peel the layers back of me, um, I heard, I, can I quote somebody I heard? Yeah. Oh, okay. As long as you're giving their props. Yeah. So, um, not a the, the woman thou art loose 2020 virtual conference. Um, I think it was the opening and Bishop Jakes said that it is not the beauty. Like, you know, I'm cute right now. It's not this that propels me forward. Mm -hmm. It's the beast. That is. I caught the. Yeah, you caught the tail, tail end. Yeah, of that? you were getting ready to leave out. I swear I couldn't listen to it because I'm not a woman, and not that it was good. Loose stuff. No, it was real good. So when I think about that in those terms, there's always a multifaceted part. So if I go back to, if I take this beauty away. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that defined me was I came from a single parent home for the most part. Um, I witnessed divorce. Mm -hmm. Not so nice divorce, I'll say that. Um, I had. Sorry, daddy, but I had. <laughs> Sorry, Daddy. That's all I can say. Um, you, you, you put your people out there. I am. They and they're going to get, they gonna they come gonna for get you. me. But um, my father was incarcerated. So I grew up having to visit him in that arena. Mm -hmm. um, and so that started to automatically shape me. Um, and then there were some obstacles just trying to be able to get to know my father's side of the family from the man my mom had married. And so from that frame of everything I had gone through and everything I had experienced, that began to form me as a young girl, mm -hmm. as a preteen and as a teenager, and just started to frame my mindset. So I come from brokenness. I come from depression. I come from um, low self-esteem and being the child or the kid. Let's, let, let's talk about the low self-esteem. Okay. Because I know a lot of people deal with that. I've, I've dealt with that. <laughs> I know it's hard to tell. Um, um, but you were basically like a, like a, a teen heartthrob. Me, you know, you were the cheerleader. <laughs> you know, you were what the, you know, prom queen. Um, yeah, you were all these accolades like that. A lot of that. A lot of young ladies yeah. wish they can even be yeah. 
in that type of category. I know a lot of women who who used to want to be um, cheerleaders. Yeah, cheerleaders roll together like packs, and then you know, and they were they were, they were always they were they were always cute. I was, you know, um, not all of for for the most part, it I always felt like if you was a cheerleader, you know, like you had eyes on you regardless of the situation. Yeah, um, everybody wanted to date a cheerleader. <laughs> Glad I married one, but at the <laughs> listen, either way, whether you cheer like that's it like was an NBA, down in my heart, but that was like an NBA rhythm. dude to say. <laughs> I, I was only in in the NBA for one day. One you, day. you were still an NBA I tried player, out, that's it. but um, you were basically like the, compared to a lot of people, you're the cutest of the cutest. But to hear that you say that you were broken. Yeah, you were um, basically shattered as a as a young as a young person. Yeah. Very so young. speak to the 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 person that is cute, and it's like to me, it's like how would you feel broken? It's like because you're cute. Oh, I mean, man. you're gorgeous. I mean, you and you said you had low self esteem. Did you have oh, low yeah. self esteem or was that? Yeah, no, I did. Um, ooh. <sighs> I don't even know where to start with that. I'll just go from, I just remember being, um, I remember when I can't even, I was younger and I remember being, I was chunky. <laughs> I went through my phase where I was very slim, like our oldest daughter. And I was just literally straight up and down. And then at some point somewhere, um, at about, mm, between I want to say seven and ten, if I can give a range, um, I started to hold up. Hold up, hold up. How old is how, how, how old is my daughter? She's seven. Oh, I got to see. Eat like that, but yeah, I started picking up weight between, and I'm just kind of estimating those years. Um, and I started picking up weight, and so, so um, being the chunky friend, uh, it just kind of, or a chunky friend and the the chunky <laughs> um, cousin. It just kind of had things festering up within me um, because I could not tell anyone how I was being treated, what was going through my mind at that time, because I was an only child. And I really didn't trust anyone with um, that information, those feelings. So uh, fast forward beyond that, uh, I remember walking down the street and some cousins that... Um, I'm going to call them extended cousins because they were on my ex-stepdad's side. And they would call me Miss Piggy because mm. I was light-skinned. You know, my mom always had my hair up in big ponytail with a big bow Miss in the Piggy front. Miss Piggy ain't light-skinned. Man, hush. And so that's... <laughs> <laughs> you can pick, that's, that's, that's some weird names down here. It don't even so go together. <laughs> That was tough. So anyway, that was how like I would be walking home from school and they'd be behind me, Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy, they go Miss Piggy, y'all. It was just like really. So I went through that bout of depression for a very long time. I did not come up out of it. So you picked on and bullied. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, and that was that was just the beginning. Like that wasn't even like the yeah, that was just the beginning of it. So you would say that because we We'll go on and on. Yeah. Part of your childhood is what shaped a lot of your adult. Oh, yeah. It, uh, and that's where I wanted to get to. Yeah. That's where I wanted to tackle um, who am I. And I think a lot of times we don't go back into our childhood and see mm -hmm. what has defined us as an adult. Right. And I think that um, we live... For a lot of puppet, a lot of other people's mm -hmm. puppet shows. Oh yes, all the time. And I think that in like we basically put them as God over our lives. If you pay mm -hmm. attention to it, because anything that they said go and it went and it stuck, mm -hmm. and then it formed us into mm -hmm. an image mentally. Because I feel like it, if you get anybody's. Heart or mental, you can control them. It's easy. But I know for me, it wasn't only the mental because it started then 
coming out on the outside. Yeah. So by high school, physical wise, ninth grade year, it was that's when I really became the hot commodity. Um, as so to speak, because then I went through this phase where right before my freshman year, I had shredded all that weight. Not the right way either. Like I I I did not eat like I was supposed to and different mm-hmm. things like so, that. Let's so talk, let, let's uh, hold up before you run over that speed bump. Because I believe people need to understand that um, just because the outside look good mm-hmm. doesn't mean that the inside is right. okay. A lot of time the outside looks very good and it looks appealing. Right. But the, but inside, the inside is yeah. so destroyed and right. it's so wrecked. And I think a lot of, a lot of, I'm going to say a lot of people because men deal with it too. Um, we're just more prone to dive into something else, you know, mm-hmm. like drugs or, yeah. or, or different or stuff like that. But I think women, they internalize it right. so much and they feel like they have to keep up this appearance mm-hmm. because they don't want to go back to, as you would say, Miss Piggy. Right. We were, I had no problem, Miss Piggy. I thought Miss Piggy was fine. You didn't even make me as Miss Piggy. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Muppets, you know? Oh. Like, you know, I thought Miss Piggy was fine. You know, wasn't was nothing wrong with her, you know? But She was cute. But I'm that type of person, like, looks for me, it, it's it's fine. And, you know, don't get me wrong, my wife is, she, she fine. But, you know, like, I know a person can look good, mm-hmm. but treat you like hell. Mm-hmm. But yeah. treat you like any type of any type of um, disrespect, mm-hmm. no regard. And a lot of times people do that because they're broken inside. Mm-hmm. Hurt people. Hurt people. Hurt people. So, and I, I, I want you to speak from that vein of, you know, you say you was a hot commodity, mm-hmm. but you was a hot commodity on the outside, and inside, but you was a wreck ship on the inside. On the inside. Yeah, I was. Um, and so being in that moment, because the town that I'm from, we all went to school from pretty much kinder through high school. Mm. So we knew each other. Um, it was only four high schools. So you knew if you stayed on one side of town, everybody was going to feed into that same high school. So a lot of these people I had seen all my life. Um, And so high school became the good, the bad, Mm. the bad, the bad, ugly, the real ugly. Um, And so I lost all of that weight. But then there was still a piece of me missing because, you know, high school is when you really kind of start developing. And so then I was the under, I was the slim friend, but then I was undeveloped. So it's always something. So it was kind of like, <laughs> man, what can I do to live up to the girls that I'm running with? Right. Because they were out more shapely than me. So then it became the comparison game. So then it was like, all right, so what do I need to do to at least maintain, you know, this weight? So on the outside, I was slim. Mm-hmm. I was wearing um, revealing clothes. Um, and then I developed the motto, okay, if my arms or my top half is out, then my bottom, you know, I would wear bottoms that were wow. long or, you know, pants. Or if I wore a skirt, then my arms. So it's kind of like that to just now gain this new persona. And so I went through that for, I think, about two years. Um, this is in high school. This is high school, and uh, I revealed to my mom, I revealed to my mama the other day. She was playing through some music, and uh, she was like, "What's this?" And I was like, "No, nah, you don't want to listen to that song." And she was like, "You know that?" I like, "Mm hmm." So, because that's what I used to listen to to go to school. I used to listen to hardcore rap, fight, Lil John to amp myself up because I hated it. Like most people were like, I love high school. No, I hated it. Like what here I am. What did, you, what, what did you hate? Like, like here I am having to pretend to be cute. I got my hair cut. Like I did all these outside things, but inside I was angry. Inside I was frustrated. Inside I was still broken and shattered and could not the figure out who I was. And so hmm. I wasn't in how I stayed. I'll say looking healthy on the outside is because behind closed doors, I was barely eating. 
Mm. Um, I remember going through in the, in the fall time around this time of the year, actually, to keep my weight down because it was football season. I would go on a grapefruit, peppermint, and popcorn diet. And so I would, that's all I would eat. You don't die. That's death. Well, that's what I was eating. And that is what was keeping me slim. But let me ask you this. Like, what were you trying to live up to at a young age? Like, it was society. Like, it was still, it was peer pressure then. The same thing that we have now, we had it back then. It's just magnified now because we have, like, media and the kids are able to get their hands on so many digital platforms. But back then it was the same stuff, right. except it was in the flesh. Like my pressure came from those people in the flesh. So if I had a friend that was top heavy and I wasn't, and I knew that was the thing, it was like, okay, well, what can I do to, to kind of get there? Which, you know, so it was still the comparison and the peer pressure and the societal views, but it was just in the flesh. So, would you say that you were lost in 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 somebody else's identity? Oh yeah. Like I I needed to in my mind I needed to I had you I mean you got to think about it. I had no sisters. I had um no one to say that this isn't you know the right way to go about it or to to sit down sit me down and talk to me about it so a lot of times i would journal um and then it still didn't help so it was like the only thing i knew now is now i'm just mad at the world <laughs> because here i am trying to figure out how to get over this how to keep from gaining weight how to run in the circle because, I mean, we're in high school now. So people that I was friends with all my life, like we were hopping circle, you know, like I went from being popular and out there and doing those different things to like, I became hated by people that I had grew up with. So you dog if you do. Dog if you don't. You dog if you do. Dog if you don't. And um, that's the thing that. I think, I think one thing I do want to talk about. Going through all of that, it sounds like I'm interviewing you. Mm -hmm. um, but because I want you to speak to, because I know I, women deal with this. Girls deal with this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, like, and I know, and I'm saying this because I watched the movie uh, 13 Reasons. I, you watched it? The what, what, the first season. Oh. I haven't did the other season because the first season to me was just like, I didn't watch it. It was so crazy for me. But um, it showed a woman in high school mm -hmm. dealing with the same things yeah. that you dealt with. Yeah. But her thing is she had no way out. Yeah. She had no friends to, no true friends right. to really coach her through life or tell you, her you know about the different things in life so what i'm saying is at at that point you made it out of that life but it was a struggle to come out because like i get I that yeah like I but never, what i'm saying yeah, is for the, this that even though the the, the struggle was real mm -hmm. i want you to speak to the women that or girl young mm -hmm. ladies who yet deal with that I mean, because you the, these are women. I mean, the, these are girls that you teach. Right. These are girls that you come across daily, mm -hmm. and you see it all the time. I know for me, I you know I always tell my uh, my young girls that you know no matter what you have on, you know sometimes they're coming like, mm -hmm. "Daddy, am I cute with this hat on?" Yeah. Maybe you 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 <laughs> cute without do. that hat on. Like I I don't care. Yeah. You are a princess and you are Regardless. gorgeous. Right. And I think we don't have that enough i was just gonna say that we won't have enough of that you know reassurance like yeah. i'm sure if you had reassurance from you know your 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 father or yeah. whoever was in your life right to tell you that listen like you're beautiful regardless of the and, situation and my dad like even though because this was a a huge i met my dad at 13 and so that was pre that was like right at teenagers so it still 
trying to build that relationship. And so that's what I like so much is I like somebody saying you're be everything that you just said, you're beautiful, you're a princess, you're this, you're that. I didn't start getting that until I was already a teenager. Mm -hmm. By that time, so much had gone on and so much had happened to where it was almost, it was too late to be saying it now. Cause it was kind of like you're trying to catch up and then wipe away everything that was going on. And so to, the girls that I teach or the girls that I come in contact with, a lot of times it's pick who your friends are. Mm -hmm. Be okay if you're if you have on I wore hand me downs. And so a lot of the kids, you know, like I said, and my hand me downs didn't come from siblings. My hand me downs came from cousins. My hand me downs I wore some of my mama's clothes because I was like big enough at a young age to be able to fit some of my mama's clothes. So a lot of those things, and that's how I relate to the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what? It's a hand-me-down. Is it in good condition? All right, you got clothes on your back? Then that's that's what matters. But being able to talk to them at the, I know your friend may have this, or and you don't have that, but the bigger picture is you still have clothes, you still mm -hmm. have shoes. So I push more of the look at yourself and be okay to be different and to stand apart. I honestly tell people dare to be different. Yeah. I like I dare you to be different and see how much it'll change your life. So I know for but me, because my well, well, you know, mine yeah. is short. Yeah. You know, because I think for me, like I had siblings, like mm -hmm. my older brother was always labeled the gorgeous one, you know, and I was just the one that was like left out. I, I used to look in the mirror and call myself the ugly duckling. And I will always like downplay myself, like and and I remember um, dating a, a, a this uh, this girl, you know, you know. But I remember dating her. <laughs> it was I had a flashback. Please don't. But um, and I loved this girl. To, I thought I did, and I and I probably did because I, you know, for me, I always led with my heart. Regardless of the situation, I always love my heart. And I remember being on three way. This is when three way was popular back then. <laughs> was um, but I remember she was talking to my best friend, and I remember her saying, I kind of wish I never told him that I loved him. And that right there, when I tell you, shattered my whole world. I felt like life was over. But I remember going through that and feeling so shattered so wrecked at a young age and, and and it was hard for me to bounce back from that and i know the power of at a young kid that's why i think a lot of stuff happened to a lot of people at a young mm -hmm. age it's like if i derail them at this young age yeah. it'd be difficult for them it's to get out back. of this as an adult and that, I think a lot of times that's what you're seeing. That's what the identity is. Mm -hmm. That's that's who you are. You you are shaped in you know being not accepted. Mm -hmm. You're accept. I mean, you're shaped in um, trying to live up to what society is, man. And and it's just. It's I hard. think for like you have to speak to the point of like like how did you get out of that or. Did you get out of it? I did not. <laughs> that's the that's the key. Yeah, that's the key. Um, I struggled after that for years. Most of it became the self image. Most of it became the low self esteem. I fought with still, still to at some extent now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easier to deal with because now I can go back and I can identify. Like, this is kind of what got me here, or these were my, my triggers. Um, but it's something that I, I'm not going to say I, I'll never get over it or never. Like, um, it just is something that has shaped me. And then in, a, in, in, a, in some sense, I learned to embrace it, but not embrace it to be stuck in that spot mm -hmm. or stuck in that mentality of like, I still, I used to like the eating thing. I still, my eating habits are still all over the place. Just depends. But I know how to now check myself and realize where I am. But that is because 
I had to get to a point where I said, pretty much enough is enough. And so I detached myself from. At what age were you when you did this now? Like, were you still in high school? Like, no, I were was you. Adult, like, now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, like I struggle, you know, my biggest struggle was I, my biggest struggle was, I think after I had Nicole. Wow. Um, Because it was like, ooh, second child, we married, we really hadn't had enough time. And then I, I couldn't get over that weight. Like I couldn't, like I had lost, like it was easy to lose the weight with with our first mm-hmm. but then the second that's when i realized like oh i'm back in i'm back in miss piggy phase because i just it, it was just hard to shake it um for many reasons uh and so i'm now just starting to come out of I, i'm gonna be honest when i just made the decision COVID mm. realm to do something about the weight that i have been carrying for what three and a half years that was when it was like okay i gotta go back to what is gonna make me happy what is gonna get me back to thinking positive about myself because i had gained so much weight and i did not feel like myself and so all it did is as an adult and being heavy set every time i sit on a stick it reminded me of when i was younger and I was heavy set, but as an adult, it was just kind of like I wasn't going anywhere, so I didn't have people to tease me. But I, in my mind, I was teasing myself, hmm. or I was talking about myself because I would try on clothes. You know, I would try on clothes and be like, "Ooh, look at my stomach!" and da da da. And so I was doing what had been done to me. Hate that man. Like so, it was just just recently to where confidence had built enough to where I can sit here right now and say. I am not the Miss Piggy back then. I wasn't that after I had our second child, but because I'm older, it's taking time. And so I'm now going about it in a healthier way mm-hmm. than before. So so your shift happened in 2020. Yeah, my shift just, re- like, I'm so recent with, with Now you got to think, like, she just gave a story of back when she was young, a child. Right. And... Just now, just recent, and twenty twenty, you said, you know something, enough is enough, right? And you carried over the same teasings, right, from other people, and, it, and you it, do it to yourself. I did it to myself, and this was despite the fact of you saying, "Baby, you're beautiful, but you're okay, honey. You're this, that, and other. like that." Was despite that because you got to think now you are the man in my life, and now you are excuse me, pouring all these things into me. But it's almost like having to fill up (laughs) because I didn't get it enough then. So I had to learn to take what you were saying and be like, no, he's really for real. Like, seriously. And so that I started to accept what you were saying. And because I started to accept what you were saying, then it was kind of like, I need to now believe what he's saying. So no matter if I'm big, I'm small, if society says that, you know, I'm supposed to be, I think the chart is 135 for my height and my age. But that 135, like you can see collarbone, like you can see my collarbone. Like I was able to stick my hand down in there. So it's society is saying one thing. And this is something I teach my students. Forget about what society has said. Yes, it is so easy to fall into those realms and it's difficult now but i have a husband who keeps me off a of regular tv <laughs> and then having a movie background when you say people been airbrushed and people been this that and the other like having that information <laughs> kind of they don't know what you're talking about when you say movie background oh he used he did some movie acting a little bit you know that's why we got all this stuff behind you know all this um We'll talk about that on future podcasts. But with with all of that information and all of the reinsurance that you had given me, then it was like, man, society, can I say, lying. <laughs> society, 
a bold, you know how they say, a bold face lie. Society is a bold face lie, period. Like, put a pen in it. Because there is no way that we're all going to be supermodel thin because that is not healthy. It's not there in the is, genes. Right. It is not in the genes. So I tell my, I tell my students, men or little, you know, younger boys and girls, be comfortable with who you are. I don't care if your friend is decked out head to toe with name brand stuff and they get their hair cut, whatever you are and however you feel comfortable, that is who you be. So let me ask you this then. So when, when did you, okay. When can you say that you found true happiness then? Once I started working out and see once I, once I truly listened to you (laughs) and started jumping rope and I started feeling, I started feeling different before I started seeing results. And so once I started feeling different, just body wise, stamina wise, I was like, Ooh, I like this. Ooh, I can do this. And then I, um, I was hiding, you weren't here, but I was hiding from the girls and I was trying to scare them because they kept trying to scare me. And so I was on the side of their dresser and I was on the floor and I was able to military crawl and was moving, y'all. <laughs> like for me, for war, I, I was like, you know, because I was trying to scare. I was really trying to get him real good. But uh, your oldest is real smart because she knew I was high and trying to scare him, so That's she would right. not come down the hallway. She was like, "Mommy, come here!" And so, like, I went. I was like low. I was literally sliding, and I was able to do so with my arms. And that is when I realized, like, ooh. I am making some progress. And then sprints, my sprints, being able to do things that I could not do six, seven months ago and be winded and not be able to to laugh and move around with my kids. But I think it starts with, and I always tell you this, like it, do, it doesn't matter. I can tell you that you're sexy, you're uh-huh. fine, you're beautiful. So I'm blue in the face. But if you don't believe that, then I'm just mm-hmm. wasting my breath, right. honestly. Because for me, it took me re- like it took me doing some self evaluation, yeah. and I took what I did, and this is this is what I did at a young age. I began to tell myself that you're handsome. I used to tell myself that I'm okay. handsome all the time in the mirror. That same mirror where I called myself the ugly duckling, yeah. I went to that same mirror and I said, you know something. And I start building up my confidence, my foundation for every, confidence. Yeah, he do it every day. Because I feel like this. If you don't tell yourself that you're gorgeous, that you're beautiful, who else is? Nobody. Well, outside, I mean, your parents I mean, should, outside yeah. of somebody trying to, you right. know, they may, they may tell you that you're beautiful to get right. something else. But a lot of time, it starts here first. Yeah. It, yes. start, it starts here. And I know a lot of us have, I mean, we got wrecked childhood. I mean, I can, I can probably throw throw this mic in any direction and somebody can tell them tell their childhood. Right. And I guarantee you it'll be about living up to mm-hmm. society's standard. Right. Or or your family standards. Or that too. Um, and that was another thing that, you know, I had to kind of deal with. And I say to it all, you know, it, it is a mind thing, and that's why what what Bishop Jake said in that that conference, uh, that virtual conference. It's a mind thing, and it's a heart thing. Yeah, he. It was just like that having being beautiful now, or feeling beautiful, or always thinking that you're beautiful. You're still no matter what. There is something on the inside of you that is ugly. So, uh, and he used a scenario, you could take your hair off, you could take your lashes off, your makeup off, all of that stuff off. And then behind closed doors, you are dealing with that beastly thing Mm -hmm. that is driving you and pushing you. You just start masking it so no one can see it. Right. So I say that instead of masking it, masking it, and I think I did that very well is I did, I masked it at some point. And then the older that I got it was evident that I was not happy with who I was or or what I was doing. And it was kind of like a demise, but then that is what is now pushing me to be healthy, pushing me to want to work out and to want to do these things. So that very thing that 
I dealt with the being called names, the all, I mean, literally being, I, I'm going to say literally being hated hmm. by people that was at high in high school with me. And still some of them, here we are, we've been out of school a long time. <laughs> <laughs> been out of school a long time and I know that if I were to go back to my hometown and see some of those people they may not even still speak to me this day well jealousy is real first so of. I like that is just something and that's the an atmosphere and I'll be honest that's the an atmosphere that I don't put myself in and I fought with that for a little while um because I wanted to go to class reunion stuff but I didn't want to have to deal with the other stuff because they were not nice to me I wasn't always nice to people either, so I, I'll I'll Same throw that right. out there. I would right. I was not always now nice to people. Somewhere. I was not always, you know. I call people names. I chomp people off. I did that, but I reap that times a whole lot. <laughs> what you put out, you get back. So I got all of that back, and I could not handle what I was getting back. If that made sense. So I have dealt with that literally all the way up to now. And so now is that time for we got a seven year old and a four year old. So it is it had to be um, with the help of therapy. I'll, I'll say that with the help of therapy, it now is a very important thing for me to be able to identify with who I am and then what made me get to that point. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want our daughters following in that same pattern that I fell into when trying to um, live up to society standards or live up to how somebody else feel they should be. I think also because these same things that you deal with, a lot of times you pass these on to oh, your yeah. kids. And that's exactly why your children may act this way uh -huh. or, you know, I always tell my wife, like, they're, they're not the same as you. Like, right. They're, they're different. They're, they're being raised in a different atmosphere. Right. So don't compare their life to your yeah, life. And I yeah. think that a lot of times we're wrapped in such pain mm -hmm. and such bitterness and that such we don't see that. that we don't think that we can pass that along right. to the next generation and in and, and the next generation and the okay. next generation to come. Yeah. And that would just leave them always fighting this, right. this thing. Of why do I always feel like? I'm trying to live up to what society mm -hmm. is doing or what what my family want me to do mm -hmm. or why can't I just be me and use the gifts right. that, you know, I love to do. I, I tell my sons, like, listen, don't play basketball or football for anybody else. Right. If you're playing, play, play, play because you, this is what you want to do. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, I support you. I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, your dad is behind you, but do not do anything because you want to please somebody else. Right. And that's that's the one thing that we we do push our kids to be able to identify what they want to do. Yeah, it's and crucial. Ha and and we're even at the point of asking our smaller kids, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" Okay. That's attainable. Never telling them that they can't do it or never putting a stigma on them at an early I'm age. The word can't. And then I, um, hate, I absolutely hate that yeah. word. Honestly. But I'm just saying, like, I mean, I some, parents, some people do that um, and always saying uh, that, you know, they're beautiful because if they get their hair done, look, daddy, mommy, look, daddy, mommy did it. Is it cute? They want that reassurance. And so you do a very good job as a father, not only reassuring me and allowing them to witness you doing that, but you also reassure them because that is building them up and building up their self-esteem at an early age. Because they, I mean, I'm going to be real honest. The kids now are ruthless. I thought like we were something. No, the kids now are ruthless because they have access to Everything they have access to. But I guarantee and you, the kids that are ruthless now, if you look back in their parents' day, oh yeah. their parent passed that along. It got passed along. Oh, I yeah. Guarantee. I totally agree. It's just that. more smart now. Like yeah. now, you can be ruthless behind, you know, the keyboard yep. or your phone. Or your phone. You, just, or whatever. you, you can just create another account and just go in on people nowadays. Yep. And or through the game, whatever. So at the end of it all, it is very important that we. <sighs> We find out who we are. Um, identify that. You are never too old to find out who you are, what you stand for. Um, it is not about society. 
It is not about the next person. It is not about your family or your friends. If there is no one to tell you that you are beautiful or that you are handsome, um, I say take the strategy that my husband has said and look in the mirror. And it's, it's weird because he's made me do it and it's kind of creepy. It's not weird. Um, it is only weird. It's weird because I had never do done not, it. If you do not <laughs> believe it. Yeah. If you so, don't believe it, it's like, why am I saying it? But when you begin to feel this thing, right. you begin to feel like, I mean, do it. Repetition is key for me. Right. But I, and that's what I was going to say. Just keep saying it be, until it becomes a habit and until you start to have that thing embedded. So whatever it is that you're struggling with, um, if that means taking some time off social media, um, unfollowing some people because the biggest thing is, and we hear this all the time, social media, they're only showing you like the, I'm just going to show you the cute side of me. I'm not going to oh, show man. you like show when you I'm that, having a bad day, when I am depressed and I'm laying in the bed with like all my blinds closed and the lights off and the TV off and I'm crying. I'm not going to show you that, but those are the beastly things. Um, that and I keep going back because it was it was so good. Those are the beastly things that we we need to start showing our children. We need to start showing others because as long as we are portraying somebody different on social media, portraying that life is just so grand and I got all we're all gonna always be someone we're really not. And we are not gonna know who we are. Because we've put on that facade, we've put on that mask for so long. So we need to actually break down those barriers and start showing people the good, the bad, and the ugly, ugly. And I think when you show them that, be mindful of who you show. Don't right. show. Oh don't, yeah, don't show. Don't show people. everybody. Right. Don't, I mean, like, be have somebody in your corner that can right. help you deal with these type of things. I think a lot of times we try to deal with stuff that is like. Out of our realm. Right. Not built to deal with things alone. You have to have that person to keep you accountable and that you can um, that you can lean in towards. Um, I think the great. Uh, um, 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 what's his name? My boy. Miles. Not Miles. Um, uh, 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 uh. My boy, Les Brown. I, I, yeah. My boy, Les Brown. And uh, I, I took this quote with me. And he said, I think he got it from somebody else, too. But the quote is, if there's no enemy within, then the enemy outside can do you no harm. And for me, that's that's such a powerful thing, because regardless of who may not like you Mm -hmm. or who did, who did. I think people don't like you because they just disagree with what they're doing. But. For the most part, who who doesn't like you, who who who's just not rocking with you, as my young people say, um, if you don't rock with yourself, mm-hmm. that's that enemy. On like the worst enemy is you, you. Uh, and, and it's gonna always be, yeah. it's always gonna be you. You told me that for how many? And if you live for their acceptance, you'll die from their rejection. Yeah. So I mean, this concludes this podcast and i just want to tell y'all to be an encourage in this time yes. of s- supposed to be sitting still but um i want y'all to understand that it's it's it's, it's inside yeah. outside is good take care of your inside first oh, yeah. and that's that's key make yeah making sure that you do have someone that you can turn to um, so that you are not internalizing. It's so easy right now during this time to internalize yeah. um, how you're feeling, especially if you have been sitting um, and reflecting on who you are and what you've been doing and what you're trying to change. Um, it's always good to have someone in your corner so that you don't uh, self-isolate so uh, and don't fall into uh, a deep depression. And a lot of the count, the therapists now are having the teletherapy. So yeah. seek help. Um, I'm big on that now. I wasn't before, but seek help. Have somebody that you can turn to um, and know that this isn't a fight that you're in alone. No matter how old you are, young, middle aged, seasoned. Yeah. Um, like I said, this is something I carry from childhood all the way into adulthood just now learning to get over it 
So um, we ask that today that you think about who you are and what can you do to change your mindset yeah. if it is negative. And if you uh, can't find anybody. Mm-hmm. We're always here. Feel free to reach out to yes. us. And don't forget to hit that like button and that and subscribe, subscribe button. Hey, don't forget to turn on notification bell. So you know when we post it. Yes. Um, this has been good. Um it man. Is. That's a lot. That's Find good. out who you are. Who are Discover you? Discover you. Yes. Who Discover you. Um are you? And like we always say, keep God first. And the rest will be added. Here we are. We out. Till you let go. Till you let go. Who you gonna be inside? Who you gonna? Who you gonna be? Till you let go. Till you let go. Who you gonna be inside? Who you gonna? Who you gonna be? Till you let go. Till you let go. Who you gonna be inside? Who you gonna? Who you gonna be? Till you let go. Till you let go, who you gon' be inside? Who you gon' who you gon' be? Till you let go, till you let go, who you gon' be inside? Who you gon' who you